Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Let's Go and Science. If you are new to here and want to learn about food science and technology, please hit the subscribe followed by the bell. Today we are gonna talk about how to analyze protein content in foods. Nitrogen is one of the five major elements found in organic materials such as protein. This fact was recognized by a Danish chemist, Johan Kedal, who used it as a method of determining the amount of protein in samples taken from a wide variety of organisms. The central basis used in this procedure is the oxidation of the organic materials using strong sulfuric acid. Digestion releases nitrogen from protein and retains as ammonium salt. During the distillation process, ammonia gas is liberated upon addition of excess alkali and is distilled into a boric acid solution to form ammonium borate complex. Finally, the ammonia liberated from the complex is titrated with standardized hydrochloric acid. The amount of nitrogen in the sample is determined from the milligram equivalent of the acid used. Crude protein is determined by multiplying the nitrogen content with a conversion factor specific to the food matrix. For the analysis, first you need to prepare your samples. For that, grind or blend samples with homogeneous. If sample cannot be analyzed, on the same day keep in a screw cap bottle in a freezer. Now, let's see what are the required reagents. For the digestion, you need concentrated sulfuric acid gel dal tablets and sodium carbonate. Here the candle tablets contain copper sulfate and potassium sulfate. For the distillation you need 40% sodium hydroxide and 4% boric acid. And for the titration you need hydrochloric acid and also you need sodium carbonate solution to standardize the hydrochloric acid. Here you can see steps of the procedure and you can pause the video and read them carefully. Now let's see how we do the analysis in the lab.
how to do the calculation part. First, you need to calculate the percentage of nitrogen and you can use this equation. Then, you can multiply the percentage nitrogen from appropriate nitrogen conversion factor. Here you can see the factor for the conversion of nitrogen protein. You can use them according to your sample. So this is the end of the presentation and you can read more about Teldal method through books and online articles. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and hope to catch you in next time with a new lesson. Thank you.